What you see is a life-size electronic snowball fight game. It's a two-player game where each player throws snowballs at the other or ducks incoming snowballs. You can only throw while you are standing and you can't duck while you are in the process of throwing. A scoreboard tallies hits during each two-minute game. Between games, a computer will play itself. Each man is about life-size. The snowballs and scoreboard are suspended from a rope stretched between two trees about 40 feet apart. The game is set up in the front yard so passers-by can stop by for a quick game and we've had fun talking to our neighbors as they electronically pelt each other. Here's how you can build this or something similar. There are too many details to provide you with a complete recipe, but I will attempt to provide you with a road map with enough details and pointers to enable you to invent your own version. You will need some basic knowledge of electronics, microprocessor development, and general craftsmanship. As with all high-voltage electronic projects, Take the appropriate precautions to prevent injury to yourself or others. The general schematics for all parts are attached, so I won't try to describe them here. I encourage you to adapt them to the components you have on hand and the needs of your project. Let's get started with the controller pad. It's as simple as four momentary switches, a duck and a throw button for each player. However, I wanted the scale of the buttons to match the scale of the game, so I found some cheap used battery operated lights and modified them to fit a momentary switch and an LED that lights when you push the button. I mounted these to a board and made some simple instructions that typically aren't necessary. The controller pad, as with all of the display components, is connected to the microprocessor via Ethernet cables. Each man is a sheet of masonite with holes drilled in it that fit Christmas lights. I started by taking pictures of me in front of a white wall while in the process of throwing a ball and ducking. These pictures were converted to outlines, combined, printed onto an overhead transparency, displayed on the masonite with an overhead projector, and traced onto the board. Then holes were drilled about every three-fourths of an inch along all of the traced lines. Because the men are symmetrical, I clamped two sheets of masonite together and drilled the holes through both at the same time. I bought several strands of Christmas lights of various lengths and fit the bulbs through the holes. It's okay if you have some extras that just hang out the back. The mini light bulbs fit perfectly in a 1 8 inch hole. However, I would strongly suggest using LED lights so you don't have to replace burnt out bulbs. Use a different strand for each segment that needs to be individually controlled. The individual segments I used were the body in the standing position, the body ducking, arm in the back position, arm in the middle of throwing, arm in the most forward position, hit splatter when you get hit, and a miss. The six free hanging snowballs are of similar construction. I drilled 30 uniformly spaced holes, which is how many lights the short strands of Christmas lights had, through a stack of masonite squares. A rope is strung between the two trees that the men are propped up against, and the snowballs are evenly spaced along the rope. Each snowball is suspended from the rope via fishing line with various lengths to approximate the parabolic curb a ball would naturally follow. Extension cords are connected to each snowball and wire tied to the rope as they lead back to either side. These extension cords will connect to solid state relay boards or SSR boards that will switch the strand of lights on or off at the appropriate time. We'll get to those boards in a second. I take some effort to waterproof all of the display boards and connections. I use upside down freezer bags for all the snowballs. Two holes in the corner let the fishing line through. The boards are covered by clear plastic leaf bags with space to let the extension cords in the back. There are several different designs for circuits that use low voltage logic signals to switch normal AC house power. My designs are based on Sean Balf's documentation at computerchristmas.com website. You'll find exact schematics with a lengthy discussion of how to build these there. Basically, the signal from the microprocessor is routed through an opto-isolator and then sent to a triac that does all the work. It's only four components per channel, and each channel is more than capable of handling the number of lights we are driving. Sean provides PCB board layouts, but I manually made all mine. This allowed me some freedom to make changes. For instance, since I'm using Cat5 Ethernet cables, I could theoretically control seven segments via each cable. That's one common and seven data signals. My board layout worked best with six channels per SSR board. I bought extension cords and cut off the plugs and connected the remainder to the board. One or two SSR boards were mounted in a waterproof surplus telephone box. These boxes are mounted to the two trees behind each man. An extension cord is routed to each individual controlled strand of lights. 
including the snowballs. The channel mapping in the software determines which channel to connect to which strand of lights. With seven channels per man, six channels for the snowballs, those for the scoreboard, and the input signals from the control pad, the Arduino doesn't have enough digital I.O. pins to control the SSRs directly. An Olsen 595 board lets us turn three digital pins into large numbers of digital outputs. An LS595 is an 8-bit shift register. Data can be serially shifted in and then the chip can be told to drive the output when the bits make it to the correct position. The 595s can be connected serially so the bits can shift out the end of one 595 shift register to the next 595. The 595s don't have enough current driving capacity to power the SSRs at distance, so the outputs are fed through a ULN2803. The 2803 inverts the logic so that it operates as a current sink. So a common 5 volt line is run to each SSR board through the resistor and the opto isolator and back to the individual channels on the Olsen 595. When the channel is turned on, current is allowed to flow to ground. Again, Sean Balf documents the construction of an Olsen 595 in great detail at computerchristmas.com. The scoreboard was made in the form of a large digital clock so that I could use it for other projects. I wanted large numbers to match the scale of the game and so that they could be easily read from a distance. However, I couldn't find seven segment displays as large as I wanted. I finally decided to build it from scratch. There are other, probably easier options, but they were more expensive. The basic works are a custom 32 channel Olsen 595 board connected to three ultraviolet LEDs per segment. Above the LEDs are fluorescent plastic that converts ultraviolet light to the visible spectrum. The plastic segments were cut and sanded to shape in groups of seven. A foam core board was cut in the shape of a digital clock face. Another piece of foam core board served as the back to which the LEDs were poked through. I put some reflective tape on the back to help disperse the light from the LEDs. Then it was all sandwiched and glued so the layers went backing foam core, reflective tape, LEDs inside the pattern foam core, and then the fluorescent plastic. This assembly created a small pocket for each segment containing the LEDs. The LED leads were wire wrapped to resistor SIPs and then directly to the Olsen 595 which is mounted on the back. A bit more framing craftsmanship gives the scoreboard stability and a finished look. The only significant change from the Olsen 595 from that previously discussed is that I brought out the chip enable line on the 595s to the microprocessor. This allowed me to use pulse width modulation to dim or turn off the sign. The project was prototyped on an Arduino Dysamilla board, but it was ultimately swapped out for a Bordrino Arduino clone. All of the code for the project is included. You can adjust the constants at the top to set the I.O. pins for the controller pad, the display Olsen 595, and the scoreboard Olsen 595. Additionally, the channel for each strand of lights is also set via constants at the top of the code. I've provided my I.O. configuration as well as display channel mapping, but both are fairly easy to change. There is a library for generically controlling an Olsen 595 should you wish to use it for another project. Built on top of this library is another that provides higher level functions when the Olsen 595 is specifically for controlling a set of seven segment displays, including dimming. I plan to keep building out the game. I hope to add some splat sound effects when the player gets hit. I was planning on using a pair of recordable greeting cards from BigDogsPromo.com and the remains of an old boombox. I expect to connect the play lead of the greeting card module to the Olsen 595 outputs for the two splat channels. Perhaps you'll have a better approach to extending this project. If so, please post your results. Thanks.